to go right into the NBA draft mock draft simulator. Of course, we are not NBA GMs or any sort of experts, but hey, we are two dudes who love talking basketball, and we are going to talk about you know best fit, what we think these teams like, going into the minds of these teams. Not necessarily, uh, you know, there will be some times where we kind of go with our picks. Um, and of course we have, I would like to put in a one override rule. Um, so if you feel like you want to override somebody, Pete, if you want to override my, uh, uh I don't know, let's say like great. Do we get, do we get like Grady, one each? Yeah. get one each. So like, let's say for example, I, like hey, I want Grady Dick at three and you're like, no way that you're going to veto that. You're just going to put a veto there. Spoiler um, alert. I'm using it on the first yeah. pick, baby. <laughs> first pick. Just because Pito, he's French. No <laughs> he's this French. French kid. This French kid, there ain't no way he's going one. <laughs> Not in my country. <laughs> That's you. Yes, I did see the first pitch. Um, not to kind of interrupt what we're talking yeah. about here. But yes, yeah. dude. Have you seen that baseball in his hand? It's crazy. Yeah, I was gonna say, honestly, the pitch was pretty freaking good for how bad that ball fit in his hand. The <laughs> fact that he could even like throw it with any sort of accuracy it's like a ski ball coming out of his hand like it's like a reverse upside down ski ball like Mm -hmm. it's gonna roll off his finger did you hear bernie from the heel of his hand right like the base where your you know your wrist meets your hand right to the tip of his middle finger is almost it's like right under a foot long that's 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 absurd he almost has Almost has, according to some people I've heard, nine foot wingspan. That's bonkers. That's crazy. Yeah. That's uh, that's definitely some two K stuff right there. Um, that's a, that's literally that's stupid. That's that light blue skinned guy in Space Jam. You know who I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's the one that gets Patrick Ewing against, against the, the Mariners. Mariners too. Yeah. Ugh, don't even talk about the Mariners right now. <laughs> hey, hey, he was in my he was in a Yankees uniform as he should be. I love it. <laughs> Oh yeah, I forgot you're uh only he, if only you went to the Knicks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um but with that being said, obviously we're on the clock. Spurs San Antonio Spurs. Pete, I don't think there's any debate here. There's no debate. It's not even a question. It's not. No, not even so. So Victor Wembanyama number 1. I mean, the one thing I said in the video that I made uh, a couple months ago talking about Victor Wembanyama, um you know, moving forward was kind of like, you know, can he produce the stats because every team has been on so far. He hasn't really been the guy. And this year, he completely proved everybody right who said he was the number one pick in the draft with the stats that he put up, uh, not getting a lot of injuries. I know that in a little bit in his past, the injuries were kind of piling up. But it seems to me that he has kind of found that formula of, uh, you know, kind of keeping his body in shape, you know, being able to, you know, get not really let the minor injuries affect him as much. And so, mm-hmm. um, you know, I think that he's definitely proved everybody right. And like I said before, I think he's going to change the way that the, the game is played just because of the fact that he does all of the, he's a triple threat type of player help side defense. He's going to be there like as quick. He's going like, to be, he's going to be the best help side defender in the NBA. The minute he steps onto the court. I mean, honestly, I, you know, I used to feel a little, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. I'm not going to use the word. Nah, I guess I'll say shy, but I don't really think that's what I mean. I'm just going to use it for lack of a better word. I used to be a little shy with my, my intense hot takes about some of these guys. Yeah. But in recent years, Bernie, I felt so vindicated, especially like my Mobley takes about him and his defense. Mm-hmm. I feel good about it. I look at Vic. There, there is going to be a, a moment, right? I'm going to just predict it right now. It's going to be probably in the summer league, okay? He's going to he's going to play coast to coast offense, right? Come back, guard the rim and then either block somebody out of the three-point line or just completely lock somebody up out there. And people are going to be shocked. They're going to be shook. Like how did he mm-hmm. cover that much ground? The thing is, he literally, it takes two steps for him to go from under the the bucket to out at the the Mm three-point line. Like, he does it with a fluidity, though, that's the difference. You know, like, there's some guys that can get close to that just out of pure athleticism, but... It's it's so fluid with him, man. It's freaky. It's for I know I sound like a broken record. I sound like everybody else, but um, he's, it's, it's gonna be absurd. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it, it'll be interesting to see, like, you know, you know, what would be 
you know, kind of using Victor Wembanyama in like a zone type of defense. I could definitely see that. I don't know if Popovich is, uh, you know, spending nah. a lot of time on the defensive end, but I mean, even you could put him in a zone, like if you wanted to. I mean, there's a lot of different things yeah. that you can do with him defensively. So, I'm excited to see what what the coaches staff will do for him, like what offense they run. Uh, but at the end of the day, Victor Wembanyama is going to the San Antonio Spurs. Do you think his stats are going to be his first season, Bernie? Just a rough prediction. Your guess. Um. I'll probably go 18, 7, 4, and like 3.2 uh, for blocks. Damn, that's generous. That's crazy. I mean, honestly, I could see him doing it. I mean, I'm not going to debate that. It's more just that's, that is bold. Yeah, you're right, you're right there. Maybe I'm a little bit more optimistic. I honestly think he's going to be like a 20 and eight, something like that. His first season. I mean, they're going to, the whole off, everything's going to flow through him. And I honestly foresee them making a signing or two. That's going to uh, impact. how he's going to be able to play too. You know, Mm -hmm. like they're going to try and probably improve a little bit around him because there's no way they're expecting to be just God awful again this season. You know, they have Mm -hmm. to like at least start putting some people around him. Um, I'd be, you know, the team I I would love to see, and I don't think this is going to happen because honestly, he's going to go somewhere where he might win a ring. I would love to see Chris Paul play with Victor Wembanyama that first season. Just that would be it'd be glorious, dude. I just think of what he did in in OKC that season. He was a coach on the court for them. Yeah, like I I think like SGA got a lot better playing playing with Chris Paul. I mean, obviously, a lot of people do, but. Especially mm-hmm. just having him as like that. He was so like respectable as that, that leader of the team, not really expecting to go far, but I'm going to give you everything I have as far as like a leader of the team. It's the type of guy. But Porzingis does, or Porzingis, geez, the original unicorn himself, Porzingis. Mm-hmm. When Yama doesn't, he doesn't seem like he really needs that. Like he's so mature. That's the thing about him, man. I sound like an absolute stand for this dude. I guess I am. I, I just don't see any flaws in his game. On the court, off the court, any of it. He just seems like the prototype. Yeah, I mean, like like we said, you know, I think Victor Wembanyama comes from a, a great family that just is very grounded and, like, keeps him uh, humble, but also we know that he's going to be talking that talk when he gets on the court. So, um, like we said, we are excited to see Victor Wembanyama play. He's going to be a cheat code out there, like I talked about um, in that video. So if you guys haven't seen that, go and check that out. Um, I kind of do my uh, analysis on Victor Wembanyama and uh, what you can expect San Antonio Spurs fans of Victor Wembanyama. I mean, he's going to be an amazing player for you. Uh, I'm sure all the teams in the top three are super jealous. You know, Charlotte is crying right now. Uh, Portland is also crying too because, uh, you know, they missed out on a generational talent. But again, there's still many good players on this draft, so let's not uh, get hung up too much on one player. But let's move on to the next team and really... Pete, I think this is where a lot of people are divided. I think it's mm-hmm. pretty obvious, um, but at the end of the day, obvious who the who the Hornets are going to take or who they should take. Probably who they should. Probably who they will take is probably going to be more obvious. Okay, um, but who maybe I could be is? wrong because I know you might be uh, going crazy. You might call me crazy. It's Cam Whitmore, of course. Um, no, but yeah, it's... Oh, my God, you scared me. There's people who have been <laughs> saying stuff like that. No, but, you know, Cam Whitmore has been rising up the board, so we'll talk about I've that I've seen in a some people say he's top five in this draft. I think that's crazy, but there are people who have said it. He could be. He could be. Um, but... John, I think it was Givoni, one of the biggest... Yeah, Givoni and Wasserman. And Wasserman, too. I mean, a lot of, a lot yeah. of the draft analysis, analysts are saying that, but... Uh, number two on the clock, the Charlotte Hornets. Michael Jordan, uh, no longer the majority owner. I don't even. He might be still the owner, like part owner, no. or no. just out. He's out. He, I think he's. Com- I think he's completely out. But they they retained him in some some way to like help talk to the draft picks or whatever. I I don't really know the full details, but I, I think he's completely out because he made a ton of money, like so much money. Yeah. Um. And really, this is where. Uh, we now look at it and uh pete i mean where are you going with this one because i I think i know where you're going with it um but i'm curious to see if everybody else is going with it so why don't you start well this is the charlotte hornets we're talking about so (laughs) we have to expect 
poor decision making. I've literally been saying this, Bernie. I think we could find some records of this. The yeah. minute that the Hornets won this pick, I told you and our friend Brad that they were going to take Brandon Miller, and I still feel that way. Mm-hmm. And it's a mistake, but they're going to take him number two. And honestly, it's less a mistake based on him, the person, because. You know, there's all sorts of questions about him and his situation back in college in Alabama, the shooting and all that stuff, right? Right. I think it's even, forget all that. It has less to do with that. I don't even care about that. That's not, it's not my business. Honestly, basketball alone. I have been telling you literally for two years, any other year besides this year, Scoot Henderson would have been the number one pick in the draft. And I still feel that way. Like, I would still take him. I would take him over Paolo last year. There's people who would call me an absolute fool for saying something like that. I would have done it. I'd take him first next year based on what I know about the guys from that draft class. Uh, They should take Scoot. And honestly, if the holdup is LaMelo, I'm sorry. Go get some value for LaMelo. Go get somebody perfect apart. Why would you not? What has LaMelo shown you, Bernie? What's he shown you as far as taking you somewhere that you haven't been for the last 20 years, which is an abomination of a basketball team. He hasn't shown any capacity to raise the ceiling of what your team is, whether it's him in the fact that he can't stay healthy at this last season, or just the fact that he doesn't really play team basketball. That's not what his game is. And honestly, I just, I am never of the opinion that in the top five picks in any sports draft, you should ever pick for fit. You should never pick for fit. It's a, it's honestly the biggest mistake you could make if you get a pick like this. You have to take the best guy available. And if your team is contradictory to that, guess what? You were one of the worst teams in the league anyway. It must not have been that great anyway. Move on. Go get something for what you have. But honestly, here's the thing, Bernie. Scoot and Lamella would play great together, in my opinion. I think they'd be a perfect fit. Maybe not a perfect fit. I shouldn't say that. They'd be a, a, a good enough fit to at least give it a season or two. But I would surely not take Brandon Miller just because the fit makes more sense. I think that's an absolute foolish decision, especially hmm. with the context of Charlotte and their situation with Miles Bridges. You haven't even wrapped up all the issues in your own house yet. You're going to add in a guy who does have the problems. I know I said I wasn't going to bring that up or care about it, but it does matter. Like, I'm, I'd be stupid to say it didn't matter. That being said, Scoot's just better. He's shown more stuff, in my opinion, as far as being a team leader, being a guy you can rely on every single night. I don't know, man. He's, I think he's jaw with his head on straight. <laughs> jaw with he's his got head on straight. He's just as good of an athlete as Ja except he doesn't do all the things on the court that drive people crazy about Ja, like just throwing his body willy-nilly into contact he doesn't need to do. But also off the court, he acts like an adult. So, I don't know, man. I'd take Scoot. I think Scoot's better than LaMelo right now, personally. That's, that's just me. Wow. I don't think that's crazy. Like, I, think what, that's, I think that's what, a little crazy. I, I, I mean, it, I, I, to me, like, you know, I think the the issue with the Hornets is more to do with the roster construction than anything else. Because, I mean, you could put Scoot on this team. I mean, he's not helping this team out with, you know, the situation. You know, you're not you're not you're not carrying a uh, Ubre, a Rosier and, and a unseasoned Gordon Hayward. Is Brandon any, Miller is Brandon Miller going to do that? No, and I'm not saying he's I'm not saying he's not going to, but I just think that it's a little harsh to say that about LaMelo. That's all I'm saying. Cuz I cuz I, I just, think I think LaMelo is a good player. I I I think he's again, I'm a big fan. You know me, Pete. I'm a big fan of the tall point guard. That I just think that it's a glitch. I totally um, I like I like him a lot, Bernie. I hope people don't take what I'm saying, and I hope you don't either. It's honestly I just feel very strongly about Scoot, and from what we have seen, I don't think any rational-minded person who really, truly, know, like, loves and respects basketball would say that he's shown anything that proves he's a winner. Mm-hmm. It, to me, that's not saying he's a bad player. That's literally, it's just not. It's just, as the lead guy on your team, the guy that everybody looks to as the best person on your squad, does he elevate the rest of your team? 
Now, I have not even seen a glimpse of that from LaMelo. It has nothing to do with individual talent. He's incredibly talented. He's way better than I thought he was coming in. It's just, I just don't see that he's ever going to be the guy that's going to be the best or second best player on a championship team. I think that's absolute craziness from what we've seen so far. Mind you, pretty limited sample size, but... Yeah, I mean, I just think to me the Hornets are gonna go with Brandon Miller. Like if they don't, yeah, I agree. Um, I agree. You know, I think fit wise, I know you, you're you're uh, you cringe at the fact that I say fit wise, but I, I just think that that's kind of it, where <laughs> it's a better fit. It's a better fit for sure. <laughs> I, I just hate it. <laughs> um, yeah, but I just think that you know, I think for me and what I'm going to, and again, I, I'm putting myself in the Hornets' shoes because I, you know, I can already see what they're thinking. And it's just that, yeah. you know, Brandon Miller, you know, size, scoring ability. To me, I feel like he's kind of like Mikel Bridges, um, kind of what we saw this year. Like, I think that's what his max, I think that's what you could get from Brandon Miller, which, again, is not a bad shout to be a, a three, you know, a two-way type of player, can score at all three levels. Um, and I just think that's kind of what what Bridges is right now. Um, and I think that's yeah. kind of what I think that's kind of where I see Miller at because, you know, I think like his floor is so high, but you know, the ceiling, I don't think is as high as I think a lot of people would like to make it out to be. Um, now can I see an NBA all-star in him? Probably, but I don't know if I can see a hall of fame type of player. And so I personally think that at the end of the day, Brandon Miller will be taken at this pick um, unless they trade, but I don't see you know, I'm, I need to see what teams are looking to trade with the Hornets. Yeah. I, th- I mean, best case scenario, Brandon Miller reminds me of Paul George. Best case. That's absolute best case, in my opinion. Even then, <laughs> so like, what, is Paul jo- what, is Paul, what is Paul George one, right? It's, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. I just, just think it's crazy to say, like, I, I think they're going to trade this pick. Yeah, I don't think they're gonna. I don't think they're gonna make the pick. If they do keep it, I 100 percent agree. It's gonna be Brandon Miller, but it's new owners. I mean, we, new owner syndrome is a real thing. I mean, Matt yeah. Ishbia is proving it in spades. He's the most new owner, new owner we've ever seen. But, exactly. Um, yeah, I think there's gonna be a team that's gonna come in over the top for this pick. I really do, and I don't know why Charlotte would take it because I think their team is so terrible that why would they like what only player that makes sense is Zion. If Zion is offered for this two pick, which he very well might be, that makes sense. But even then I still might not trade it. And that's just me wanting Scoot if I'm GM. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, I think Scoot is the next player that people are going to take. Um, I think that any team that's looking to move up is going to take him. So, uh, or should we go with Brandon Miller at number two just for? Because uh, yeah, of that? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna use my veto on this. I agree with you. I do think if it's Charlotte, they're gonna take him. But as as the usual, Charlotte is gonna do the wrong thing in a big situation. So yeah, I mean they've only gotten one move technically right, and that was just Lamella Ball. Um, so Brandon uh, maybe. Miller. Maybe. <laughs> I guess Brandon that depends Miller. on how you feel about him. Yeah, I'd pick Brandon Miller. All right, Brandon Miller, ESPN number two. All right. You know the funny part about Lamelo, Bernie. Sorry to interrupt you. Is that he? They kind of didn't make that choice. That choice was made for them by the Warriors. Oh, true. Yeah. Wiseman. Yeah, because uh, he helped them out. The Warriors helped them out big time. Helped them out big time. Uh, number three, Trailblazers. Like we talked yeah. about, this move right here single-handedly will determine the future of where Damian Lillard goes. Does he stay in Portland and they trade the pick? Do they? keep the pick and trade Damian Lillard. That's the big thing that's coming up. And they have the number 23 pick pick as well. Pete, Mm -hmm. I think it's obvious here. We're going to go with Scoot Henderson. I mean, generational talent type of point guard kind of reminds me a little bit of D Rose, maybe a little bit better um, of a passer. Um, And so, I mean, I I think it's Scoot. So Uh, he's pretty similar to D Rose. That's a good call. Honestly, he's like, this is the reason I'm so high on him. It's just, it's the, the culture changer he might be for a team. Like he really seems, and you know me, Bernie, I'm a body language. I'm a culture type of guy, right? I'll hail heat culture, but <laughs> this is the, this is the type of guy that's going to set the tone for you for 15 years. If you're lucky and you treat him right. 
And to me, if you're any team that has been bad for a little bit of time now, looking for a new change of direction, this is the guy that you want not named Wembenyama. This is a guy that can actually change how the the mentality of your team functions. Um, yeah, man, I th- I I'm very very interested to see what's going to happen with this because really, Bernie, I think we both agree. If any team trades to number two, Scoot's going number two. Yeah. If for whatever reason that tr- that pick doesn't get traded, number two, and Scoot's available at three. It's going to be one of the most interesting selections in a long time. Because really, there's very little opportunity for or chance that Portland is going to just run it with two small guards again. You know, and Dame made very clear he didn't want to play with the teenager. So uh, are they going to take Scoot? If they do, it guarantees that Dame isn't on this team next year. And if they don't take Scoot, they're making a huge mistake or somebody else is trading a bunch of stuff to get there. Um, Do you know what I'm really curious about Bernie or the team I would be looking the most uh, side eyed at as far as maybe this is going to be their pick instead. Yeah. I'm pretty curious about Toronto. I think Toronto might get this pick. You think so? Who are they, who are they going to trade? I mean, a hundred percent Pascal Siakam is going to be in the trade. Mm -hmm. Um, OG, but it's good. It might be both of them, but a cor- the way that Toronto talks about OG, I mean, he might have the most value in the league according to them. So, I, I don't know about OG, but some some big package involving Siakam for sure. Just because I could see the I could see the fit with Scoot and Scotty going forward. A g- good name combination. I didn't even think about it like that. Scoot and Scotty, but uh, I do think Toronto is going to be in the mix for this pick. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a very interesting situation to continue to monitor because, uh, I mean, I, I, you know, I think Adrian Wojnarowski or whoever went on the Pat McAfee show said that they've shut down calls about Damian Lillard getting traded, but I don't see that happening. I, I think that these yeah. teams are regularly in communication with one another, and if they could trade, they would trade somebody for a heartbeat. And, you know, it's going to be one of those situations that we're going to have to monitor. Um, and it's going to be a, a situation where we have to really look at, um, you know, what, what, what I think the blazers have to decide is, do they want to start young, you know, or do they want to, you know, go with Damian Lillard and say, here, let's go for one. Let's try to go again one more time. What would you do in their situation, Bernie? I mean, obviously, like, there's no guarantee, right? Like, Damon Lillard is the guarantee that you have. But, damn, yeah. it, is, it is tough because, you I'd, know, I can see why, Dame. like, <laughs> you're, le- you're sticking with Dame? Oh, I'd be moving on from Dame. Moving on. You're breaking up. It's just it's a win win for everybody involved. It's one of the very few perfect timing for every single person in involved in the situation. They're not there's there's no way what they could get for this third pick is gonna be good enough to put them in real contention. There's literally nothing they could get in return that's that good. Like the best trade is something like Siakam and OG. And honestly, I still don't think that makes them a championship contender with what they currently have on that roster. So if you're me, if I'm them, if I'm the GM, you have a chance to like perfectly hard reset your squad with Scoot, go get a ton of value for Dame while his value is as high as it will ever be going forward. And save yourself the headache of having a bottom team in the Western conference and paying one dude $60 million. You have to save yourself from that. It's a, it's a catastrophe to keep him pass up on the best player in the draft, not named Wembenyama, And then look at yourself in the mirror in two years and say, wow, we're going to be awful for a long time. We're going to be really, really terrible. And we, we didn't need to be, we didn't need to be, but I have, I have a sinking feeling that, uh, 
I, I don't know, Bernie. I feel crazy saying I think the two and three are going to get traded. They can't both get traded based on what we've said. Um, yeah. It, it, it's going to be one of them. It's gonna, which one do you think is more likely, Charlotte or Portland, to trade their pick? Charlotte, for sure. I, I think that they're going to they're gonna get a haul for that. Um, maybe not a haul. Re- but, you, yeah. But I think they're going to get some, like, to me, because I – from the stuff that I've been hearing, I know that uh, Scoot and Dame have been in contact with each other. And so if you want to uh, make sure that Scoot doesn't you know, have a connection with uh, Dame, you have to make a trade at number two because I think for the Charlotte Hornets, they're going to go with best fit. And you know, it's going to fall right into what the Blazers probably are going to go with, with Scoot Henderson. And so I think that unless, again, the Blazers have to really get like a top tier guy that they want in order for them to yeah. trade that pick. Um, and if they don't, then I, it, then I think it's going to go scoot Henderson to, 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 uh, to Portland. But I think you have a better shot at convincing the Hornets to trade that pick than you would have the Blazers, unless you're going to give like, like I said, a star player so you can uh, team up with Dame. So I think it's more likely that uh, you're going to have to have to trade for the number two pick. Yeah. Yeah, which that would greatly change Portland's destiny. Like, I would say if Scoot somehow goes number two, uh, whoever it is, I honestly don't. That would mean Portland is probably less likely to keep the pick, actually, now that I think about it. Because they don't, why would they want Brandon Miller? That makes even less sense. And I guess the fit makes more sense, but being a teenager, basically, and still not really ready to take Dame to the promised land or help him get to the promised land. I don't think that makes any sense either. Yeah, I think we're both in agreement. 100%. Three, if he's not already taken a two, is going to be Scoot. 100%. It's, there's no way he goes past three. It's just not happening. Yep, Scoot Henderson at number three to the Portland Trail Blazers. On to the Houston Rockets. You know, I think that this right. is also another kind of weird one. Not in terms of like who they probably would pick, but more so uh, with the looming trade that's going to happen potentially with James Harden, or I think James Harden signing with the Houston Rockets. Um, Pete, I mean, I'll, I'll you start it, man. Like, what what do you think? What I mean, I know who they probably would take if they're not going to go with James Harden, but uh, with the possibility of Le- uh, LeBron James, the possibility of James Harden joining this team. Where do you see them going? Well, from all accounts, that sounds less likely by the day, Harden going there. Um, sounds more like he's actually going to stay in Philly. For somehow, somehow he's going to stay there. Um, this one's really tough because I don't know what their plan is. Like, they have signaled that they want to get a little older and more close to contention, like quicker than mm-hmm. the, the schedule. You know, the timeline, as we used to say more often than we do now, the timeline would say they should stick young, just keep going the way they're going. But I do think there's a real question, Bernie, of whether or not the young guys, all the young guys they have are people they should stick with going forward anyway, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I have a player that I would not pass here personally. If I'm on the draft, you know, if I'm on the clock, if I'm a GM, wouldn't get older with this team i think they're terrible um i think you need a couple seasons with Eme as your guide and still some culture like we were saying about scoot too right um if i'm them i'm taking Amen thompson it's just not even a question i think he's the fourth best player in this draft um honestly bernie this is where i might lose some people i would probably take Amen thompson over brandon miller personally Personally, wow. the whole to- the whole totality of the package of what you're getting, the you know what we know just as far as everything that we've heard about these guys, I have to lean on Men Thompson personally. He's okay. six foot seven. He's a point guard. According to what you were saying earlier, Bernie, this is the exact type of guard you you like. Yeah, the pa- pass passing guard. He's literally going to be one of the best athletes in the NBA the minute he gets drafted. He's a freak. Um, and I, I don't know. I just wouldn't pass him. Like, I would rather go into next season with him as my starting point guard and try and move on from Jalen Green if I'm the if I'm the Rockets, personally. 
Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm I'm in agreement with you. I think Amon Thompson just like I said, you know me and my point guards. I like him tall. Um, That's, and so this is my guy. I'm going hard on his cards. He was I was si- signaling earlier. I already have some of his cards, the OTE elite cards. Hey, you guys heard it here first. Amon Thompson, pick up his rookie card as soon as I'm he gets drafted. For me, actually, no, don't say that. Don't do that. <laughs> They're my cards. <laughs> They're mine. Uh, but yeah, you know, I agree with you. I mean, Amon Thompson, I think is just the best fit. You know, they try to make Kevin Porter Jr. a point guard. He is not a point guard. He's a score first guy. Jalen Green's a score first guy. Jabari Smith um, and really Alfred Sangoon could also uh, could all benefit from an Amon Thompson being on this roster. Yeah. I think it, it's a good yeah. pairing. Um, and again, it's kind of one of those things that Yudoka, you know, as kind of like the father figure could, you know, mature these guys into being a contender in the next couple of years, maybe not contender, but at least, you know, get ready for the playoffs. Um, I think defensively, that's still a question mark for me personally. Um, but offensively, I think it's going to look great. I mean, you know, Yudoka is more of a defensive minded coach. So I'm curious to see mm-hmm. like his staff and what they do offensively. If Ahmed Thompson is the pick here. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I agree that I think it has to be Ahmed Thompson. Um, the guy is too good um Mm-mm, from what we good. saw from overtime elite six seven more of the passing player out there i think the shooting mechanics the shooting mechanics are a little worrying to me but you know just like anything it can be it can be fixed i think with the right coach um and the right mentality i mean he just has to be kind of that guy in, in the gym uh kind of putting in that work and so i i can see him being that guy and so i'm excited if he is in that spot because i think he's going to make every one of their guys so much better um, and you have another kind of Alfred Sangoon, kind of a playmaking center as well. So yeah. I think it does bode well for uh, the Rockets to take Amon Thompson. I think it's a good fit. I give you my fanfic. If I was the Houston Rockets GM, exactly what I would do. What would you do? If I'm the Houston Rockets, and I've I've been preaching this all all year, <laughs> so it shouldn't come as much of a surprise for you, Bernie. But that being said, if I'm Houston, number four comes my way. Picking Amen Thompson, a hundred percent. Then what I'm doing is I'm taking Jalen Green and whatever else I need to put together for that number five pick, and I'm taking Asur Thompson. I want them both. I want to put them on the squad together. You wow. have two foundational pieces who have built-in chemistry with a team that really had no chemistry. You have none in Houston. So what else could you do that would better set you up going forward with a young squad than to take two twins who have always played together and then build out your squad? And in my opinion, here we go again, Bernie. I'm going to say another controversial thing to some people. I think this isn't controversial if you've watched this kid play. I think Asur Thompson, I would take him over Jalen Green right now. Oh, my goodness. You got You got the hottest of hot takes right now. Bernie, it, He's to hot. me, it's not even a, it's not even a question. <laughs> like to me, if you go watch a Sword Thompson, I would recommend everybody go do this tomorrow before the draft because he's going to go in the top five or six. Mm-hmm. He's an elite defender already. He's a much better defender than Amen Thompson. Like they actually have diverse skill sets between the two of them. Like Asur is off ball, best defender on most teams he plays for, if not just outright the best defender on every team he plays for. Amen Thompson is lead guard, ball handler. Mm-hmm. They're both freak athletes that can do whatever they want on the court, and they're huge. So if I'm if I'm Houston, you're literally trying to build from bottom floor. You're at the foundation right now. Go set yourself up with some success in terms of you know that chemistry. And honestly, just I I'm not a big Jalen Green guy, Bernie. I haven't seen to me he's a worse version of Lamelo. Like he's smaller does a lot of the same selfish things on the court that really does not lead to good possessions as far as offense is concerned. He's basically a zero on defense. So just, I don't know. I think you have to get the most value out of guys like that, that you can while they still have it and not just sit there and wait until it's, you know, I would say Ben Simmons, but really they did get good value for Ben Simmons. So you just can't wait until it's too late. But yeah, I would take both of the both of the Thompson twins and get rid of Kevin Porter Jr. and uh, Jalen Green. Green. That's what I would. That's I would do that tomorrow, hundred percent. And I mean tomorrow's the draft, so that makes more <laughs> sense. Yeah, exactly. Drew Timmy um, at four. Drew Timmy at four. He should Drew, go in the draft Drew for Timmy sure. At four. 
We're actually going to talk about another guy that Sean's probably going to be triggered at that he's going to be in the draft. Um, so, but, so we're in agreement. I'm in four. Yeah, right. I'm in four. Guarant- guarantee. As the, that was probably F- my worst Charles Barkley impression. Five. <clears throat> guarantee. There we go. That was That's a way better. better than it had any right to be burning. <laughs> <laughs> I that was, was not better. expecting you to just drop an actual pretty good impression. That was not bad. Um, so, yeah, I'm in Thompson for sure. Four. I'm in Thompson four. Let's go five. This is Detroit, correct? Detroit basketball. What are they going with? <clears throat> well, again, if it was me, I would not pass a sore Thompson right here if I'm them. But they do already have two guards. And mm-hmm. mind you, two guards that they took very high in the draft. Yes. That being said, you could very easily slide a sore Thompson into the three. You very easily could do it. Like, it's mm-hmm. not even a question. He could definitely play that spot. Um, I don't think they're going to do that, though. I actually think he's going to slide past this spot. He shouldn't, but he will probably. I actually think they're going to take either Cam Whitmore or Jarese Walker here. Uh, I think it's going to be Cam Whitmore, though. I think he makes a lot of sense. They don't mm-hmm. really have a, a, a three in general, which is why I said Asur could slide there. Yeah. Because um, they can move Bogdanovich very easily, as we know. I mean, everybody and their mother tried to trade for him last year. Um, yeah, they also got rid of – they cleared the way a little bit for that spot, trading Sadiq Bey. You know, they, they clearly had – long view plan of what they needed at that spot and he didn't really fit so no i i would not take Cam whitmore over us or thompson but i do think that's what's going to happen what about you bernie yeah i mean i think it i think it's cam whitmore just because i think when you watched him play at villanova he's a score dominant type of player like he's kind of to me a, i wouldn't say lamel or not lamel uh carmelo in a sense where he's just kind of looking to, you know, iso ball, attack the rim, um, you know, can shoot the jumper. I mean, I think that's kind of where I where I lean towards seeing Cam Whitmore. Um, he kind of has that ability. Uh, Sean, we'll talk about him in a little bit. I have my thoughts on him. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think that for me, like Cam Whitmore is kind of one of those guys, like you said, Pete, like the best fit for them. Uh, you know, I think that he kind of fits a need and really... Yes. Um, the shooting is kind of what what is killing the uh, the Detroit Pistons. I mean, if you look at their roster, they don't they don't really have a lot of guys that shoot the three consistently. And you know, he was no. pretty solid this year. Um, still needs to improve on it. Not saying that he's like perfect, but you know, if you're look if you're gonna take a chance on Jared on Jarris Walker, the problem with Jarris Walker is that he is more of a defensive guy, and yeah. his offense still needs to develop, and his shooting is nowhere near where you want it to be. And so to me, I think Cam Whitmore makes the most sense here in terms of who they have um, and what they I don't think, I don't think uh, Walker makes too much sense with Jalen Duran. I mean, because if this team has any brains in their skull, they're going to just move him into that spot. Like James, James Wiseman and Marvin Bagley are not as good as (laughs) Jalen Duran is already. Like, it's just not even a question. So That's the case, and they do make the right choice with Duran. Uh, Walker really doesn't make a ton of sense. You can't really play those two dudes at the same time the way they both they both play right now. Yeah, so I, th- I think we're in agreement. Cam Whitmore at uh, at number five. Yeah, unfortunately, can I tell you something though? This is, this is my big. He's <laughs> no, I'm not gonna veto because I think it's gonna happen. Um, I have a guy I'm saving my veto for in particular, my sleeper of the draft, actually. Um, I actually think it, this is just me from what I've seen, my research. I think Cam Whitmore, he's got the most bust potential out of all these guys in the Uh-oh. first, in the first seven. Peter. Me, just, I would, I don't know. I worry about it. We haven't seen consistent enough shooting from him and his, I, I don't know. I just don't trust it as much as some of the other guys. Interesting. But let us know in the comment section down below. What do you guys make of Cam Whitmore at uh, number five? Are you in agreement? Do you disagree? Let us know in the comment section down below. But he is going to the Detroit Pistons at number five. And number six, we got the Orlando Magic. Now, this team could go in a lot of different directions. You know, they have a lot of guys on their roster that they could potentially go uh, in for. Uh, but currently, uh, if we're looking at depth chart, uh, Jonathan Isaacs is not starting at the at the four. I'm sorry, this this website's n- not not right. Um, but you have 
you know, you, you got, I hope so. you got Franz Wagner, you got Paula Bancaro, you got Wendell Carter Jr. Uh, you got, uh, you actually got both Wagners. Um, you know, I think the shooting guard position more. is something that you could potentially look at uh, for an upgrade. Point guard, too. Point guard, too. I mean, we've heard rumors that both Suggs and Cole Anthony could be out of there if they're potentially getting a point guard. But, Pete, what makes the most sense here? I think I think your guy, Asur, makes the most sense here at number, uh, what is this, number seven? No. Six. This is number six, yeah. So, all right. So, if this – I would, first of all, preface this. I think other than Toronto for that number two pick, this is the most likely team, in my opinion, of trading up for two. Because I think Scoot makes, like, unbelievable sense. sense. Yeah. yeah. Unbelievable for what this team has already. Like, he would be unbelievably perfect for what they have going on. Um, Let's just go forward assuming that's not going to be the case. Scoot's already off the board. Um, it's definitely Amen Thompson, uh, just based on what Asura. they have. Asura. Yeah. Asura, excuse me, Asura, yeah. He's better. I mean, he's better than Gary Harris is. No <laughs> offense, Gary Harris. Um, yeah, they need they need to do something, though. They really need to come out of this offseason with a, a better point guard, too. So yeah. per, in a perfect world, if they let's say they can't trade for two, I honestly think they should try and get Amen Thompson because he would be a perfect fit for them, too, if not Scoot. Get the other six foot seven and have just this freaky long, crazy team that can all ball handle and play make mm-hmm. for each other. They're, they're going to be up there on my uh, my league pass watches next year. They already kind of were. They were creeping into the rotation this year, but next year if they get a point guard for Paolo and Franz, they're going to be a problem. So yeah, let's based on who they who's available right here, it's going to be us or Thompson. So. I think yeah. we could probably lock that in. I think we're both in agreement. Yeah, I saw Thompson at number six to the uh, Orlando Magic. Let's book it. It's a pretty good fit, too. They would yeah. be it. It would be a defensive nightmare if Paolo kind of comes into his own fully on that side. Exactly. I mean, I, I like the fit already. I think it's going to be a, a fun team to watch, like you said, in the uh, yep. in the league pass. Um, let's move on to the Indiana Pacers this website is kind of crazy for saying that their point guard, they severely need one. Uh, that is cap. Um, that yeah, must be well out of date. Yeah. But at number, se- that, right? at number seven, this could also be a very interesting spot for, I potentially could see this being a spot where a lot of teams look to trade into. Uh, 100%. Because, I, because I think that there's some guys that we could talk about. You know, I think uh, guys that kind of come to mind for me are guys like Anthony Black, Grady Dick, uh, Kudabali. I think that those are kind of three potential candidates that teams are like, hey, like this is someone we really have high on our draft board. Let's see if we can go make a trade with the Pacers. <laughs> Maybe the Lakers. Um, no, not really. Bernie, I'm already going to tell you right now, Bernie. I'm going to use my veto on this pick. Oh, okay. I'm excited to see who you're going to veto here. But um, yeah, I think this is like prime, like let's try and trade with the Pacers to get somebody and you know give the Pacers some pieces back because... You know, I think that this team is pretty solid in the spots that they have. I just think that they're, you know, kind of missing some things here and there. And I think it just has to do with their, uh, their three position, their three position, you know, with, uh, you know, either, you know, Benedict Matherin is kind of coming into his own, uh, but you also have like Aaron Naismith or even their four could also be another reason why yep. uh, a lot of people have kind of picked Gerald, uh, Jarris Walker in this spot. Um, yeah. He makes sense if Indiana keeps the pick for sure. Yeah. Um, but who are you, who are you going to veto here? Who are you going with? Well, I'm going to preface this. I honestly don't think Indiana makes this pick. Like this, like you said, I am in full agreement. This is the place where a lot of teams are going to say, hey, that is a great value. Our guy is still on the board. Mm-hmm. This screams, this might be San Antonio, the pick they trade up to get, right? Mm-hmm. They're them or OKC. I could see either of those teams saying, let's go get that pick. I think it's Koulibaly, Bernie. That's my guy in this draft. Koulibaly. My sleeper sleep sleeper pick of the draft is Koulibaly. He is he is going to be a problem on defense. There's a lot of great defenders in this class, in my opinion. Um, but Koulibaly is completely overshadowed by the other giant Frenchmen in the draft. Um, but Koulibaly is going to be very, very good. And in my opinion, I think he screams like this is a know he's closer to the project side of things but 
I think you have these teams like OKC and San Antonio that would look at a guy like Koulibaly and say, yeah, we, we want to put him on our squad for the next mm. 10 years. You know, let's just go yeah. make the move and get him. And I think San Antonio makes a ton of sense. Like, put him and Wemby together right from the jump. They already have played together. Um, I'd, I'd be doing it. Right? Yeah. I'd be doing it tomorrow. But, yeah, I'm, gonna say, I'm saying Koulibaly at seven. I think he's, the, he's better than anybody left, in my opinion. All right, so Pete's going with Kudabali as his. Uh, uh, what do we call? It? Who were? Wait, I should have. I should have said who were you going to pick right here? Who would uh, you have put? I probably would have taken Taylor Hendricks if I'm being honest. Okay. I think that he kind of offensively kind of reminds me of like a, a Jeremy Grant a little bit. You know, I think yeah. offensively, I think he has it. Defensively, he's pretty solid. And you know, I think with his skill set and his tools that he's got. Uh, he's definitely a guy that I could see them like, you know, another position positional need because right now, uh, you know, they have Jalen Smith who, again, I was never really high on in that draft. And so, uh, yeah, he's okay. He's fine. Yeah. But, but he's, he's definitely not a starter of the future. Yeah. And so I would go, uh, Taylor Hendricks, but Kudabali is the uh, Trump card. And that is what, uh, we're going with Kudabali at number seven, small forward to France from France. Strateg- to- Strategically, I should have seen who you were going to pick first anyway, but um, I feel good about that. I would take Kudabali over Hendrix any day. All right. I don't need We're- a point guard. What's wrong with this website? It, this must be a year behind because it says that they have a low need for power forward. So it must be assuming Sabonis is still on their team. Yeah. I don't I have no idea. Um, it's the only explanation. But here we are, the Washington Wizards, you know, another team we just talked about earlier in this, uh, in the, uh, in the stream. Um, and this is a team that still has uh, Bradley Beal and Porzingis, uh, but, um, uh, yeah. And Kyle Kuzma, who is going to be a free agent this, uh, this off season. Um, but the Wizards here, I feel like they have finally made their peace, Pete, um, of really kind of letting go of you know the Bradley Beal cloud that hung over them because every year that they had him they've kind of done this weird we're going to draft the same type of player archetype for the last like what it seems like the last five to six years uh from that being Rui Hachimura uh to that being uh Corey Kisper to that being uh uh Johnny Davis uh 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 who was the other guy that you you said is Danny Danny Yeah, yeah 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 Danny Avia. I mean, it's just, to me, it's just like the same player over and over and over and over mm-hmm. again. It's time to get the point guard position right. And that is why, for me personally, I'm going to go with uh, my guy, Anthony Black, who I think is going to be the sleeper of the draft. Wow. Uh, I think that he, you know, 6'7", you know me. Uh, but, you know, I think that he has... From what I've seen, kind of watching some NBA Combine stuff and uh, from the, the you know, kind of what I've been hearing and obviously, you know, it's all grain of salt type of thing. But um, a lot of people enjoyed the workouts that he's done. He's kind of uh, shown a lot more skills than I think a lot of people have been uh, acquainted with. And I think that's the reason why I think in order for this franchise to finally reset, um, I think you need to go with your point guard of the future. Because there's not, there, to me, there's no real wing out here in this draft that's like, I'm going to get this guy uh, going and not left. Um, and so to me, that's why I'm going with Anthony black as uh, my point. Well, the wizards point guard of the future to kind of set them up for the next couple of years as they look to get better. Um, and so I'm going, like I said, I'm going Anthony black in this pick. Yeah, they, I mean, this is officially a team that needs every, everything. Like yeah. they literally need everything. So can't really disagree with you. I would probably take Jairus Walker here. I like him a bit more than I like Anthony Black, but uh, I don't, yeah, I obviously don't have a veto anymore anyway, but I don't feel strongly enough about that that I would even have used it anyway. Um, makes sense, and really they, they have nothing. Like, they don't really have pieces to build with going forward other than mm-hmm. role players. Like, I honestly will disagree with you slightly in the sense that, like, I do think Denny Abdia is he's developing into a pretty okay player. Like he's definitely a solid defender um, can play, make a little bit. And Mm. honestly, Kispert isn't that bad either. I mean, Kispert shot 43%. No, I love, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I love Kispert too. And I wish he was included in that, uh, 
Porzingis trade. But um, you know. <laughs> yeah, that'd be generous. You'd be <laughs> getting very lucky to get him in that too. Uh, but yeah, I see. I like those guys. So maybe, I yeah, maybe Anthony Black does make sense. Get somebody in there that can you know get them the ball a little bit, mm-hmm. play with them, develop. Um, they definitely need a ball handler though. Yeah. They definitely do. They did last year too, and yeah. they, we saw how it went for them. They were awful. Yeah. So Anthony Black at number eight to the Washington Wizards. I think it just makes, like I said, the most sense uh, with that tall point guard position. Yeah, Sean, I agree with you. Wizards have the number one pick next year. Yeah, they only waited till uh, the wrong year to do it. One year <laughs> too late. Yeah, let's move on to the Utah Jazz, kind of the surprise team or one of the surprise teams in the NBA this year uh, with a with a great push uh, for the NBA playoffs. But they fell a little bit short and really uh, – I think they're running it back with most of these guys. Um, but what do you feel like the need is here for the Jazz? I mean, I think they could go in many different directions. Um, but where do you think the Jazz could go with this? Yeah, they could definitely take this a few different directions. I, I really think they need more shooting. They need more offense. I honestly I like they have their center of the future. Walker Kessler is legitimately very, very good. He's already in the second tier tier of centers in the entire mm-hmm. NBA, I would say. Um, so you really, and he doesn't really shoot necessarily. So I would say going out and taking a, you know, another big body at the four, somebody that doesn't really shoot like Jairus Walker. Mm-hmm. I don't really think that makes a ton of sense unless they feel super strongly. I would take Grady Dick here in Grady their spot. Dick. Fitting the, yeah. fit the Mormon culture well. It's, U- it's Utah. It's it's <laughs> Danny Ainge. You know how they like their their white boys out there. Or they're going to gravitate towards men named Grady. Um, I think that makes a lot of sense for the Utah area that he would be going to play in. But also, I do think fit-wise, he makes a lot of sense. And personally, like I think I like him more than I like Taylor Hendricks, personally. Mm-hmm. Um, Jairus Walker, I think, is more of a project than Grady Dick is, too. Yeah. So it kind of depends on how you feel about him. But yeah, for this pick, I think it makes too much sense that he goes there, Grady Dick goes to Utah. Uh, it just fortunately works that it's kind of a good fit too. So they're not necessarily just going to get roasted for taking the big white dude. <laughs> exactly. Um, I, I like I, like Sean said earlier in there. Like I do like Grady Dick as a player. I think that he is I like him some, a lot. Uh, someone that I would personally would love to have on my team. I think he does a lot of great things. Like you said, he stretches the floor really well. Shooting. I think he was one of the best freshmen in the. Big Twelve in terms of three point shooting, and so he he definitely can do that. I think he's going to be what Utah fans were hoping Jimmer Fredette would have been in the NBA um, as someone that yeah, like he's, he's better than he was. Yeah, Grady and just Dick just someone that could like shoot the ball well, you know, kind of be in the NBA for a very long time. Uh, Grady Dick definitely has that because he has that six uh, six seven frame. Um, he's going to be someone that can be relied on, and I think it's going to be a great fit in Utah. I mean, they you know they have Horton Tucker who. Uh, I mean, yeah, Horton Tucker, man, he kind of yeah, Horton here's a, a who, bit. he kind of fell <laughs> off just a little bit. So, um, you know, it was kind of a little disappointing to see that he fell off that way. But, um, but yeah, I, I think Grady made a mean joke. I'm glad you you kept talking because I, I almost <laughs> said something I would have regret about old Tail and Horton Tucker. Can I tell? Can I tell you my team that is the perfect fit for Grady Dick though? Who's Any per- team? The Mavericks what? is the Mavericks, and weirdly enough, another. <laughs> <laughs> Let's gravitate towards the white dude, Mark Cuban. We know how he, you know, he likes him as far as his uh, taste of player is concerned. But that being said, he's he's honestly a perfect fit next to Luca. Like he's constantly moving off the ball. He's always moving. Like that's one of the things I think that people are underrating about this kid. He's an incredible shooter. Sure, mm-hmm. great. He does a thing that not enough guys do. Drives me absolutely crazy have these three-point shooters who just will sit in a spot and wait it's like nobody has to think about you they know where you are you've given them no uh second guessing right Brady Dick does like you know he's always moving he's always getting into a new spot I think you put that with Luca his shooting he's like an uber version of Davis Bertans he's like <laughs> like and times the Davis Bertans. He's what you would want from a guy like that. So, yeah, I think if any team could get him, Dallas should be the team. But I hate Dallas, so I hope they don't get him. 
Yeah, I think we're in agreement that Grady Dick's going to get taken here at nine. I mean, like you said, I think he is a perfect fit for Dallas. Even with Kyrie still there, I think it's a good fit. Like you said, shooting that they des- desperately needed. Fit. Desperately need, but... Uh, need defense, though, so that is a, a problem. Like, he's not necessarily a super strong defender. Yeah. So uh, we're going to go with Grady Dick here for uh, the Utah Jazz. Uh, but Dallas Mavericks, uh, they have some very interesting, uh, they could go in a lot of different ways, but I think one way makes the most sense. Um, yeah. If I'm keeping it real, actually they could go in many different directions. I think the two directions I could see them going in Pete is they definitely could go the Taylor Hendricks route just because I think that his skill set and his assets to me scream like a, a guy that could definitely feature for for luca pick and roll pick and pop like he could definitely do a lot of different things with him uh but another guy that you know was getting a lot of buzz in the draft is uh, Derek lively Derek lively is another kind of Ooh. player uh center seven two big guy that you can is going to be a major upgrade from both uh dwight powell and javel mcgee um and you can kind of leave for christian wood if I, I can't remember if they still have him or not i think they do yeah they have him still um, but that could be, a... they have his bird rights. I think yeah. he's a restricted free agent is what mm-hmm. it is. I might be wrong though. I got to look that up. You keep talking. I'm let me research Christian Wood real quick. Yeah. But I mean, that could be another situation where we see, uh, you know, a guy like Taylor Hendricks with his skill set and assets could be partnered well with Luca and Kyrie. Um, and so I think that that's something that you should be looking out for. Um, Derek Lively is another guy too, cause he's a little bit of a bruiser. Um, seven, two. I mean, you're, you're doing a great job. Um, uh, if you get Derek Lively, just because I think he is a major upgrade from Dwight Powell. Uh, you know, I think Derek Lively needs to shoot the ball a little bit better. I think he shot like 15% from three uh, during college, and that's a, a little bit of a shocker, um, especially for for a guy that big. Like, you know, he obviously shot well during the the tryouts or like the the private workouts, but we all know those workouts, you know, you're not, you're not shooting against anybody. You're shooting against air. And really what teams care about is can you shoot against a defender closing out at you? Uh, cause space is so limited in the NBA. And so I personally would go with Derek Lively. The second here, I think he just makes the most sense as a center that can finish around the rim. You can run a lot of different things with him and Luka Doncic. So I'm going to go with Derek Lively here at uh, number 10. Um, uh, but I also think that Hendricks is also a good shout too, because he's a, like I said, the skills and the asset he's Jeremy Grant. And uh, last I checked on this roster, there's no, uh semblance of jeremy grant on this team and uh i'm actually a big fan of jeremy grant so he would definitely be a huge addition uh hendrix would but i could I see the mavericks grant. i could see the mavericks going with lively looks like christian wood is unrestricted actually so yeah he's going to be a free agent uh i would actually firmly disagree with you based on what's left bernie i would take jarris walker here i think that to me that's a no-brainer as far as what's concerned what's What's left and what they need as a team, like they literally, I think if you run their roster into next season the way it's currently constructed, which obviously is impossible, they have some free agents, but let's just say it's the same team. They're the worst defensive team in the entire NBA, as far as I'm concerned. The only team that would really give them a run for their money is probably probably Houston. I think they would give them a run for their money, but they're they're abominable on defense. That's where, like, if you're a team that needs a guy like that, Jairus Walker is going to be menace on defense. And that's why, like I was saying earlier, this is a really deep defensive draft. Um, they they traded their best two defenders away in the middle of the season for Kyrie last year. They have nobody. So I'm I'm not looking at offense. You have Kyrie, poor, you have, I almost said Porzingis. You have Kyrie and <laughs> uh, Luka Doncic. Like, you really don't need, like, Taylor Hendricks eating up some shots, um, in my opinion. So, yeah, I would take Jairus Walker, but I'm fine with whatever as far as this pick is concerned. I don't like them. I hope they make a bad pick. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, let's go, let's go with Jairus Walker. I feel like, you know, I think he slid a little bit too much. And, uh, you know, as much as I want to go Derek Lively, uh, it's not a veto that I would pick. So, uh, Jairus okay. Walker going to uh, Dallas at number 10. Let's get it. All right, now we're back to the Orlando Magic. Uh, this is, of course, the trade from Chicago's first round pick in that whole uh, worst trade of all time, other than the Rudy Gobert trade. Uh, could be there. I think it's it's close. It's definitely close. It's close. Um, but we we did pick Asur Thompson with the sixth pick. 
we know that there is uh, a lot more positions to be filled here. Um, I honestly think that you could go with uh, with Jalen Hood's Shif Shifino. Shifino, yep. Yep, I, I would go with Shifino here. I mean, uh, good NBA prospect. I know that he's a, a guy that's been rising up the boards. Another guy that's actually been rising up the boards is um, is Kobe Burfkin. Burfkin. From uh, from Michigan, he's another point guard that's been actually rising up the ranks a little bit. I could see, you know, he was a guy that's kind of rumored to be in the NBA lottery uh, around here. Um, oh, yeah, Buffkin. Yeah, he's yeah, climbing, he's climbing up pretty quickly. What, what did I say? Boofkin, Shia LaBeouf, Burf, Burfkin. I think is what you say. You just threw an R in there. Oh, Buffkin. There you go. Yep. 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 You you caught me. I, I've been exposed. I like him. Um, I like him on that one too. I like yeah. him for this pick actually. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's a guy that I could potentially see him. So uh, it really depends on, like, who you who you like here, if you're the Orlando Magic and, you know, kind of your scouts and, you know, what the community has been talking about. Because, again, like we said, a lot of guys are picking Bufkin as the, as the guy. Who I like a little bit too, Bernie. This would be a little bit of a reach at this spot. Um, I like Kassan Wallace too. Kassan Wallace, defensive defensive anchor. Yeah, I like him. I like I like the the idea of him um next to their big guys and honestly like the one thing that I I would say like is not necessarily his strength is he he's not a very he doesn't have a very good handle, like he's not a good dribbler per se. Like he's not going to be your lead ball handler, but that kind of works for them in the sense that they already have mm-hmm. Franz. Like Franz is kind of their lead ball handler if they don't end up getting a, a actual point guard at six yeah. or whatever that pick was I, I might be a reach for Kassan wallace i like him if not buffkin i think either of them would make a lot of sense for this team yeah i think i'm gonna go with kind of the consensus here and i think it's gonna have to be uh buffkin here i don't know if this is a veto or not but uh i'm going with buffkin here just from the rumors and all the stuff that i've been hearing i think buffkin is the guy that they're gonna go with so we're going yeah, buffkin i can see that I see that for sure I want to just now, wrap up the lottery, Bernie. I don't know if I can go too much longer after that. Yeah. Uh, lottery ends at, like, what, 14? Yeah, 14 is okay. the last one. Oh, uh, we got a Woj bomb? Hang on, we got Uh-oh. a Woj bomb. Oh, no, 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 no. Is it Bernie? I don't have Twitter. Oh, it, they're finalizing it. Oh, it actually It's a three-way deal with back. Memphis. Oh, God. I'm a rant. Uh, George Tell, uh, let's see here. With Boston Memphis, that will send guard Tyus Tyus Jones or Tyus Jones to the to the Wizards. So it might be. I, still... li- I like Tyus Jones. I know. I think it's a huge loss for the. Uh... Why would they do that? What? Wait, so who's Memphis getting? Are they getting Brogdon? They're gonna get Brogdon, I think. Okay, I guess that kind of makes sense. I hate that trade. <laughs> <laughs> Why would they do that? I like Tyus Jones. Yeah, I mean, late breaking. Don't even news. have a point guard. <laughs> yep, your what? point guard is going to be out for twenty five games. So that's uh, interesting. What is uh, that? What is that team doing? Late breaking news, everybody. Hugged uh, into the Grizz. Maybe they just want like a vet. That is a terrible, terrible idea for them. What in God's name? going on <laughs> what uh which which trade did you like more the clippers one or the way better for the way better for everybody involved in the clippers one but but even then i i don't blame the wizards i'd rather have bias jones than some garbage pick that is probably not going to meet be anything you know i think tyus jones is like a legit top tier second guard on a team like a backup guard yeah, I mean, this is going to be... I uh... mean, Brogdon is too, to be fair. Brogdon is too. The problem is, is he's hurt all the time. Now you don't have a card. You don't have any point guards. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. They must have a plan. They must have something more uh, in yeah. store as far as their guard spot's concerned. Yeah, we'll see there. Um, but let's move on to the to ending this draft because I know you got to get going. Um, yeah. Oklahoma City Thunder at number 12. Uh this is uh, another selection where it just feels like, uh, you know, they could go in a lot of different ways. You know, I think Derek Lively or Taylor Hendricks makes the most sense here. Um, but 
man, I, this one to me is a little tough because I, I think that there's some because you know po, Poku's out for the season. I think with that injury that he picked up during the off season. Oh no! What will they ever do <laughs> uh, uh, without Poku? <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, I'm going to go with uh, them going with. Uh, no, I'm going to go with them going lively. I know that they have uh, Chet Holmgren, but he's another guy that can kind of back him up. Um, or he can even be slotted in there and move Chet to the four. Um, and kind of have like that, yeah. this like super uber athletic lineup with Shea Gilgis as a taller point guard. You have uh, Josh Giddy as a very tall shooting guard. Um, I think at the three, you can kind of go with who, uh, Usman Diang or Dort. You can still, you can put Dort in there. Um, and then you have, uh, Chet, and then you have Derek Lively. So I think that's... What about Jay dub You're getting Jay Williams, my, my oh, boy. Oh, Jalen Williams. If you know what? That's he's on me. critical. Yeah, that is on you. I love you, but that's critical. He's a he's an animal. He is going to be so good for a long time. I'm a, a ride-or-die Jalen Williams guy. He was one of my other guys last year. Yeah. I had he, a lot he was of our, cards collected. I definitely remember him as, like, that's the guy that... Especially seeing him in Santa Clara. You were... You were super high on him too, Bernie. I know. Well, he was one of my like should have been. Uh, he was, more, he was your guy. Career. Hey, you rode hard for Jalen Williams. You were uh, you definitely were more on him than I was. Even then, yeah, they have a see in a perfect world, Bernie. This is I would say this is uh, Indiana, right? Indiana has traded with OKC. OKC took Kula Bali at seven. This pick is Indiana, and they take Hendricks. I think that makes a ton of sense for both teams. That being said, with the way we have it, number 12, I agree with you. Yeah. Oh, Marcus Smart is being part, of the, is part of the deal. Oh, what? Yep. Wait, 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 wait. What? So, did Boston get anything else out of it? Uh, I don't know. I, I feel like they're being very vague for just to add more tweets and get more replies. Yeah, Woj, what a scumbag, dude. Woj, get out of here, dude. Mr. Clicks and viewer retention, that's all he cares about. Give us the news, man. And You're Middleton. a reporter. Middleton became a free agent just now. Who? Chris Middleton. Middleton? Chris Middleton. Chris Middleton. Chris Middleton. Would he opt out? I guess he yeah. was going to do that anyway. Hey, so now that has to mean Marcus Smart is going to Memphis. Yeah. Ha- it has to be. So now I'm not mad at Memphis. I actually love that for Memphis. I think that's perfect. <laughs> that's exactly who they needed. Somebody who could just say, hey, all you guys, shut up. I'm the boss here. Whether or not he should do that, that is one of his superpowers. Marcus Smart thinks he's the leader of every room he's in, whether he should be or not. So I think that's a great call for them if that is how the trade is going to end up going. But, wow, we've had a back and forth affair with this trade, Bernie. I feel like we've been swung in all different directions. I know. It's a little bit, of a, gut, feel a little bit of a gut punch, but it kind of makes sense, especially with the injury of uh, Malcolm I've... Brogdon. I mean, it just makes sense why they would just be like, yeah, we're just not, uh, we're not looking for uh, to add you. So do you have the trade in front of you, or is it not all – it's not all put yeah, together. I mean, Woj is like tweeting piece by piece. That, it's, kind of, it's kind of like putting a puzzle together. Does that mean together. Brogdon's not in it? Brogdon, I don't believe, is in it. So I think that the injury oh, wow. is a little bit of a concern, I think, for a lot of teams. I think that's why the first reason why yeah, that trade fell that through. Clippers, they didn't want that. They didn't want that injury. Okay. But even here's the thing, though, Bernie. I would actually say the best version of your team is healthy Brogdon in Marcus Smart's place. I think he's better for your team than Marcus is. Still don't know. I, I mean, you still can't count on it because he's injured so much. But <laughs> we're also um, getting their first round picks. Getting the Grizzlies' what? first round picks. So, yeah, uh, that well, that that actually that makes a lot. You got two firsts, for yeah. Marcus Smart. You got poor Zingus and two firsts. He's learning Marcus from the best. <laughs> Danny Ainge, Danny Ainge apprentice. Bernie, if <laughs> Bernie, if I if I ever hear you complain about Brad Stevens ever again, I'm gonna have a popped blood vessel in my eyeball. <laughs> he's yeah. honestly been the he's a blessing. This dude's making the I heard so much moaning about this guy. <laughs> he's done nothing but make banging moves. <laughs> 
I mean, to, like, like like we said earlier, and uh, you know, I know I really want to honor your time because I know you have to get going. So, but um, oh, dude, now I'm now I'm in. I'm I'm back. He's in for another hour. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that, but I'm back in. I'm this is action packed. What? I know. Well, hey, Marcus I'm glad that Smart is finally traded. I'm kind of glad we're, we're okay. So here's the traded summary from what right, the, tell me now. I'm gonna shut up. Underdog NBA said an official Twitter. Uh, so the Celtics get Chris Epps for Porzingis, the number 25 overall pick in this year's draft and next year's uh 2024 pick. The Wizards get Tyus Jones, which I I really am going to be curious to see who's going to go trade for Tyus. Because Tyus Jones is so good. There's, there's no way he stays on that bum Wizards team. Some needs, somebody's going to come get him. I kind of hope sure. the Celtics try to go get him. Um, but and then they the Grizzlies, already, and then tried the, to get him the Grizzlies get Marcus Smart. Is there another Woj bomb? Or is this no. the same Woj bomb? Oh no. No, no, no Woj bomb. Other than just yeah. Middleton declining his offer. Um, That's, dude, Brad Stevens is the GOAT. How do you end up with poor Zingas and two firsts for Marcus? <laughs> I don't I'm know, broken, man. I'm broken, Bernie. I'm it's, broken on the someone's inside. Someone's dead. Someone's dead inside. Um, how, do these teams do, how do these teams allow this to happen? That's uh, That's insane. Marcus, Marcus Smart and Corey Mark? Kispert, the best duo in the NBA. This Corey Kispert, what's he doing? Did he get traded too? I don't think he got traded. They're not playing together though. Oh, did that just get deleted? Okay, that's yeah. probably why. Okay, <laughs> I saw that and Sean I was like, really wait, wait, wait. Happen. If Kispert's going to Memphis too, the only team that truly lost is the Wizards, which I guess oh, wouldn't be that much. Yeah, he of a changed surprise. it. Tyus Jones and Corey Kispert, best duo in the NBA. There you go. I mean, hey. they're definitely <laughs> going to play good together. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of astounding. crazy that this is happening during our uh, NBA draft lottery uh, picks. But, um, wow, let's uh, let's wrap this part up first, Pete, and then if you want, we can talk a little bit about it. Uh, yeah, let's let's wrap up the lottery, and then we'll talk for a few more minutes about the trade. Okay. Um, so Thunder at twelve. Uh, I think we went with uh, who did we go with? I mean, I kind of, I kind of I said I you picked lively. I I think I said lively. We, I don't think we... I don't think they would pass Hendricks here, but I'm fine with it. I think Lively makes sense too, because they could play Chet at the four. I just don't think they're going to. I think he's going to yeah. be like a stretch five. All right, Lively there, thirteen. The Raptors, like you said, a team that definitely is looking for their point guard because uh, their point guard is not there anymore. Um, yeah, and you have OG, you have Pascal, you have my boy Jakob. Um, yeah. I think that they could go in a di- lot of different directions, but the directions that make the most sense are these point guards. Um, you yep. know, Case and Wallace, Nick Smith, or uh, Shafino. Is, is Shafino. Kind of, I think I'm going to be honest with you, Bernie. I've watched, out of all these lottery guys, the least Jalen Hood Shafino. I'll be straight up with you. So my, my opinion is a little bit biased in the sense that I have more of a... a film relationship with some of these other guys, I would actually take Jason Wallace here. That's who I would take. Um, I prefer him personally. Um, but I, I don't know. I actually think they're, pro- I think they'd probably take Nick Smith jr. Here. It's kind of like, uh, a... just, he's big. He's a big dude. He has a lot of like, he was one of the higher ranked uh, prospects coming into this, this last year. And he, you know, didn't go 100% as planned, but I think he makes sense. He's not necessarily as much of a ball handler um, as you might assume most you know most point guards would be. But they have they have Scotty. I mean, he yeah kind of brings the ball up the court a lot anyway. So okay, um, well let's go with Nick Smith Jr. here. I think it makes the most sense. Yeah, I think it makes sense. Uh, Fourteen, the Pelicans. I think this is the last lottery pick. This is thinking. the last lottery pick. Yes. Um. I mean, they there, ain't, some... there, ain't, there ain't no way Hendricks makes it past here. No, Hendricks no has... shot. I honestly think Hendricks is a little too low here. Um, he's 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 not going to be at fourteen. I mean, no. they'd be blessed if he's at fourteen. Yeah. So I think Hendricks makes the most sense here. Hendricks at fourteen, and then who's who's there for right now? It's real. I mean, it's Zion, but not it's Zion. Like Larry who's... Nance Jr. I think. Yeah, come off it. Yeah, they. Would be yeah. crying if they got Taylor Hendricks to drop the fourteen. 
Okay, so really quick, here is our 14 picks that we have in this NBA lottery. We've got Wemby, Miller, Scoot, Amon Thompson, Cam Whitmore, Asura Thompson, uh, Kuda Bali, Anthony Black, Grady Dick, Jairus Walker, Kobe Bufkin, uh, Derek Lively the second at 12, Nick Smith Jr. at 13, and Taylor Hendricks at 14. Let us know in the comments section down below. Do you guys agree? Do you guys disagree? But uh, yeah, I mean, this is going to be a very interesting draft lottery. Obviously, it's going to be tomorrow, so you're getting this video right now. So hopefully you do enjoy uh, us talking a little bit about the NBA draft prospects. I know we got interrupted by some Woj bombs. They're just flying everywhere. We're kind of stuck in no man's land. Got Woged. We got Woj. And, you know, it's going to be an interesting situation, especially as we talk about that moving forward. But let us know in the comment section down below. NBA draft lottery, who you got as your top five. Do you agree with our top five? Let us know in the comment section down below.